to us the toast. Let it resound, since in this proud communion by thoughts of brotherhood we're bound. May joyful cheer never disappear from all good hearts now gathered here. Uh, warmly welcome, our dear guests. Uh, we must thank the Slovenian Book Agency brought you here. I hope you feel fine in our little house of books. And maybe you recognized this uh, poem, which was played uh, now. It was interpreted by a uh, famous British actress, Vanessa Redgrave. It's a poem, The Toast. <coughs> it's also a Slovenian national anthem. But our house of dreaming books also has its own short anthem. And if you allow me, I will read it to you. Can you hear it? I am the shelter of endless calm, a creature of imagination, the shelter of the lonesome, igniting dreams in the night of thousand years. I am Sanye. This was a poetic interpretation of our <coughs> little bookstore, which is one of the last, or maybe the last independent bookstore in Ljubljana and also in Slovenia. And the publishing house, Sanje, is also small, but very hard working community of contribu contributors, authors, editors, and all other members of our publishing house. And now I will, would like my colleagues, Andrea Udoj and Rob Zavrtenik, to give you a short introduction in what are we doing, what is our goal or our goals, and what are our dreams, which we try to make real every step of the way. Sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's easier, but we have uh, a lot of good times together and we work together uh, mm -hmm. with open hearts and we recognize also our mistakes and are not afraid of them. Please. Yeah, thank you, Nada. She's uh, also one of our editors and uh, a TV presenter and in a great interpreter of uh, Slovenian uh, poetry and uh, literature in Slovenian language for audiobooks. And uh, hello to Andrea, also my colleague editor. Uh, my name is Rok, and I founded this publishing company about 26 years ago. Actually, it wasn't, it was just made out of a dream because Sanje means uh, town. And I'm sorry, we, we both speak non Aboriginal languages, however. I, <laughs> I cannot speak enough good German, and uh, so we, we are speaking using British language, English language now. Um, so, uh, Sanya was uh, inspired in 97 uh, due to the fact that some great, great, important uh, Slovenian works never was, were published. One of them was Franja Milczynski Ježek and his, um, his poet, he was a great comedian, he was actually kind of Slovenian Charlie Chaplin, that kind of genius, and also Jacques Prévert and also, I don't know, I don't have, he was a great, uh, he, he made first radio play in Yugoslavia even. Uh, we can speak later about this because it's up to this day, it's the most beloved Slovenian radio play for children. It's called uh, Little Sleepy Star. It's uh, Zespanka in Slovene language, and we have it also in German language. Uh, so, so Sanje, all about Sanje is uh, to somehow protect and develop that the, the, the very important place of our, or shelter of uh, free thought and free expression. And we have a great privilege as Slovenians. Uh, we are less than two million speakers. However, we have a great production. We translate, some experts says, more than all USA. We translate more here. Uh, so we also try to speak and to, to, to work out of awareness that there are 
many languages around the world which does, does not have a privilege to speak out, to write and publish their books. Like, by some estimates, there is over 6,000 languages in the world. Only 100 languages so has economic capacity to publish. Uh, and we try also with our work to, to help them who are voiceless in this uh, digitalized world. So that was just a couple of words, Andrea. Yes, like um, Rock was saying, it, it all started with dreams, which is um, the basic fundament for, for everything in, in this world, as we believe. Um, and then it just sort of blossomed from, from there on. And now we are um, very happy that, um, very proud um, that Sanya keeps existing, or has, has been existing for the, la the last 25, 26 years almost. Um, Rock was uh, there from the beginning, then others we were joining um, on the way, and it's always such an um, interesting, inspiring, and just um, very, 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 very special voyage, I would say. And um, today, today Sanje um, enjoys the reputation of being one of the finest Slovenian publisher, publishers. Um, and also, we have a we have a reputation uh, in the surrounding region because we also translate um, and and publish in in the in this Balkan Balkan region. Um, we are very much look, looking forward to Slovenia being the guest of honor at Frankfurt Book, Book Fair 2023, and we see this as a unique opportunity to present uh, Slovenia, its rich culture and literature um, before the world, of course. Um, like uh, Rok was saying, we represent, and in, in some cases also exclusively represent, um, some of the finest Slovenian authors and illustrators, such as poet, humorist and storyteller Frana Milczynski Ježek. He's uh, considered um, to be Charlie Chaplin of, of this Slovenian scene, a very great humorist, um, and Rok, he was He's sort of like you, your literature love, isn't he? I mean, you were you were especially. Yeah, he was a great visionary. I mean, he, his poems are very simple. Uh, some would say, "Oh, that's almost kitsch," but it is not. It's it's very it's very and it's uh, the readers and the listeners confirm to that. I mean, that it's classic forever. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, his simple love that was one of the songs, or the ballad of a slice of little slice of bread, which is so actual today when we again face the time of wars and so on. So it's really, but better speed it up because we have. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll just mention Strejko Kosovil. We will listen to his poetry um, later on. Nada will read it to us because you will be visiting Karst, Karst region, as we understand, uh, tomorrow. And just to get this um, soulful feeling of the, because he was a poet uh, specific to, 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 to this place. Um, but also very poet of cosmopolitan vision, definitely. Um, then we have Svetlana Makarovic. Uh, she's a grand dame of Slovenian poetry. Um, our Vladimir Bartol, um, our, our best-selling author, author of um, Alamut. Um, more about that later. Um, but then also we need to mention Alma Karlin because um, she was an authoress who was um, uh, originally writing in, in German language and she has been, she has been also uh, published in, in Germany. So there we have these bonds with... with yeah, she was uh, one of the first women, uh, we probably heard about her, she was one of the first Alma women Karlin. who traveled the world. Mm -hmm. And she was a writer, and she was in Germany pretty successful in the 20s and 30s, even becoming a bestseller, but then she was, of course, banned. And, um, I mean, it's, it's a sad story about her, but her, her uh, writing is, is very, very uh, popular in Slovenia, and so we are one of the publishers of her work in Slovenia. And then to, just to give you a quick overview, an idea um, of what we also do in the, in the sense of um, translated works, because we, we translate a lot also. We publish uh, world-renowned authors such as Orhan Pamuk, Walter Mors. I know you will yeah. yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> you will, you will know him. Then Patrice Zuber. Yeah. 
um, Patrick Zuskind also, then Hernan Diaz, Isabela Emde, Boris Anarkadis Trugatski, Laut Se, Ali Smith, Kurt Vonnegut, Frank Herbert, Sylvia Platt, uh, Federico Garcia Lorca, um, Nikola Tesla, Marin Jai, Tove Janssen, Simon Weil, Wilhelm Reich. The, the list goes on and on. This is just like we, we really, um, we, we try to be very cosmopolitan in, in our vision, as cosmopolitan as, as possible, but also faithful to, to this place where we are coming from. Um, so this, um, then maybe it would be interesting, uh, we, we are a relatively small publishing house, but we publish between 35 to 60 titles per year, we some, we some, per year. Um, we sometimes joke we are a little bit um, insane because be, besides that we, we are a small, small team. Um, and besides that we also do other uh, projects. Um, and we have some very close bonds with German literature. Just to mention, for instance, we have translated and published first complete Goethe's uh, Faust. Um, and uh, you will be happy to hear that it's completely sold out. And um, uh -huh. what, what do you think if we, sometimes people come in, into the bookstore and, and they would ask if there is perhaps one, one example <laughs> left and they would be willing to pay. This is the very last one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was very precious for us. Um, we have also uh, republished the sorrows of uh, young Werther, um, and then we published the entire Zamonian series by um, our beloved uh, and your beloved, probably Walter Morse also. Um, and Andrea, sorry to interrupt. You. Yes, right to say that House of Dreaming Books actually yes. the name of this bookshop was inspired by Walter Morse, uh, I think. It's uh, the Stadt, the Stadt der Träumenden Bücher. Der Träumenden uh, Bücher. Yeah. Yeah. So he's our great inspiration in many ways. <laughs> so you see how, how We're still waiting for the continuation of the third part for almost 10 years now, I think. I don't know. And, um, and perhaps um, we, we will publish uh, Princess of Insomnia. This is the one yeah. we, we haven't published yet, but... Um, so... Um, and then perhaps another door um, to German readership um, that we've opened in the past, uh, it was the publication of Sonete der Liebe um, by our um, by Slovenian poet Franze Prešeran. He was uh, he was writing in the uh, roman during the Romanticism movement during that era. Um, and he's considered um, the greatest Slovenian po poet of all times. Um, this uh, rock was another project which is very dear to, to your heart, heart, how it all happened, how it came to be. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, the 200th anniversary of the birth of Franz Eprescher, who is really, for me, the best poet in the world, of course, but the poetry is untranslatable, so... That's always the problem how to translate a poetry because it's really not translatable. You can only write it in a new way. So, so for instance, uh, but we try to do our best. We use the translation of Lili Novi, who was also a great poet, and then uh, we talk to some great act actors uh, in Germany, um, and finally we made it with you know uh, Angelika Maria Škoda, who's a great, great um, artist from uh, Berlin, and uh, Blixa Bargeld, who is known by you know the collaborator of uh, Nick Cave and Einstein der Neue Baden and so on. So he was so. But then we we've done in English with some great actors like Catherine Cartledge, Vanessa Redgrave, and then we wanted to continue in France with uh, Jean Moreau, Catherine Deneuve. But then uh, Slovenian state never really supported the project, so we never, we never continued it. So it was a great vision what to do, and it was a great challenge. All these great artists accepted it only because they recognized really true value in his poetry. He was very, very uh, avant-garde for the first half of the 19th century uh, regarding many issues, uh, the women rights and so on and so on. So... Um, yeah, and nevertheless, I mean, some some of it did did uh, come to life, um, and so today we can we can listen to the recordings, to the interpretation, to the interpretations of, of 
the giants, you know, from British cinema, you know, such as Vanessa Redgrave, um, Katrin Kartlich, as Rock was saying, and then of course your very own Blixa Bargeld, um, and it is all, all I don't know, maybe he yeah. wasn't that popular in Germany with Einsturz and mm -hmm. the Yes, he yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I remember uh, in, in uh, 80s, yeah. I think yeah. it was in 80s, yeah. they came uh, several times to Ljubljana to have a concert, and we were so enthusiastic about <laughs> it. I, I haven't missed uh, one of, uh, not a single of these concerts, mm -hmm. and it was really very good sound for that time, but even now. Now he's doing completely different stuff, I mm -hmm. believe, but mm -hmm. he's very uh, active still. But it is so beautiful, you know, to see um, national heritage come to life um, through just wor worldwide, basically, you know, and through different interpretative voices. This is what, what inspires us and, um, and just, I don't know, um, that's why we, we we go on, you know, with this. So we have, we have further, further um, ambitious plans in, yes, in that regard. Uh, so, a uh, movie of Alamut is our next big international <laughs> <laughs> world project, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is so. We will. So. We will just, because we don't have. We don't have so so much time. We will just uh, quickly move on to our um, three literary gems, which we um, f feel could be could have could could have a special eco um, and are and are of relevance for the international market. Um, and first, I would. Yes. Yeah, may I ask one thing before? Absolutely, please. Talking about Goethe's Faust. Yes. How, how much, how many books can you can you sell of Goethe's Faust in? Uh, the print run was 600 copies, yeah. and it was sold out. So it's pretty it a lot for that. poetry yeah. in Slovenia because mm -hmm. it's so small market. Yeah. So you yeah. sold every, every book. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But it was really beautiful made, and it wasn't that expensive. So mm -hmm. how much uh, biblic, uh, what? How much is it? This, this it was, I don't know, it's sold out for over 10 years, but it was like 50 euros or something. But this is really made like a Bible. I mean, it's yeah. it's on best it's Bible paper. It's with all, uh, um, very thin paper. It was awarded uh, the best, the most beautiful book of the year in Slovenia. So this is really funny in Slovenia. I mean, uh, some poetry can be very popular. For example, Srečko yes. Kosovel, who, I don't know if you know, he died only 22 years. Uh, old uh, in 1926 without one published book and now he's we sold for example one of his poetry 20,000 copies which is incredible okay. and um, yeah. so the poetry is really is really very powerful can be also Ježek I think we, we just reprint this book or on some others of his book I, I, I mentioned the, the, the book we started with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the same uh, friar uh, Karl Gajan and other author. Uh, yes, I mean, know, we, we sold are... almost 20,000 copies of another project mm -hmm. which but is connecting with Germany. Maybe we can explain German. who Karl Gajan is because uh, I don't believe that, uh, uh, the, um, yeah, that he's known uh, outside the, of Slovenia, there is a... but he's very important, uh, I would say internationally. Is it too daring to say that? Yeah, of course, uh, and, and it's, it's, not, it's, yeah. it's a great yeah. uh, a curse of a small languages that some greatest projects are almost untranslatable. And, or, for example, for me, the most important book probably we ever published, one of the most, is this one. It's called The Partisan Diary, Edward Kozbeck. He was a great, great intellectual who was during the Second World War one of the leaders. Of, he was a social Christ, Christian, a social... Uh, so, Christian socialist, socialist. Christian socialist. and socialist. a part of uh, Free Liberation Front, and he wrote every day a diary, and it's incredible. He was a philosopher, actually. Uh, I don't know, it's almost 1,500 pages. Who, who can translate? Maybe artificial intelligence sometimes, so I don't know. <laughs> but this is actually the same time of poetry, because he was a great poet. Uh, how to do that? And Friar, uh, Karl Gajan, he's our probably best-selling author now. He's uh, the most beloved personality with most trust in people, I would say. And we published seven or eight titles by him. And this one is connected with Germany. Why? Because we published it exactly at fi 500 years of the Reformation of uh, Martin Luther. 
uh, in, is his friar's 95 cases nailed to the door of Church of Capitalism to achieve liberation from parasitic crematism. Uh, we translated this into title? English, <laughs> and we sent a copy to Francis Pope as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, how to explain that to, for example, to German people or to other? I don't know. We sold almost 20,000 copies. It cost only three euros in Slovenia. And um, 20,000, and imagine that in a, in a market of only two million. You know, yeah. and of course, no, not all of those are readers. But I, I, can I just I tell one I've anecdote. Maybe they will like it because they are journalists. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. uh, when I, I was at the workshop of like uh, how to do the publishing business, and one of a uh, director of sales of one of major British publishers, uh, and at the end we asked him, oh, what would you do as a owner, director of a company publishing in Slovenia, with only two two million people? And he was like. He become very resignated, and then, okay, I will tell you honestly, I cannot imagine anything business-like in a so small market that is, that is smaller than a part of the city where I live in, and you even, I'm not sure you know this, the, the name of the city, my mm. city. So, so maybe you should uh, learn teach your children and uh, you know, to, uh, to inspire them to learn e English language or something. And maybe you can be successful in English language, but Slovenian, it's impossible. It's no go. And in a way, he was right, because this is not business in Slovenia. It's always also a survival. So you have to master, you know, some uh, meditation technique to remain calm. And <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rock is constantly reading loud, say, when, when it's the most hard part of the day or the most hard time, he, he takes the book and calms himself down. Yeah. You uh, said to me uh, yeah, no. today that you, you were, you were <laughs> okay, no. upset about something and then you yeah, read okay. some... Not just loud, yeah. so it can be Kosevel, it can be yeah. Kozbeck, it can be... Walter Morse. But it's, uh, <laughs> the poetry is... Uh, it mm. has a healing power, definitely. Yeah, it does. I, I so, just wanted to, to add something uh, with respect to the, this, those peculi peculiarities of um, Slovenian market. Um, Rok was explaining before, you know, how poetry is actually successful here. I mean, this is, um, this is very non-typical um, fact, I would say, w worldwide, but here, it does happen. It happened with uh, Tona Pauček, for instance, another uh, poet, um, with Srečko Kosovel, with uh, France Prešeran, and so on. So this is a li just, just for you, you know, to, to have an idea. We are, I guess we are a, a nation of, of poets, you know, in the... So everyone writes poetry, <laughs> and uh, everyone <laughs> in <laughs> Slovenia. <laughs> Okay, uh, yes. and then um, so those three gems that I began talking about are first in the um, in the field of children's literature, um, our beloved heroine uh, Little Sleepy Star. We have translated it into uh, ten languages so far. Um, also, Schlafsternchen. Also, in in it's been translated into German, um, and it's. Um, Classic, very beloved, very humorous, um, uh, endearing fairy tale for children. We will give you a free copy for you to take home. For yeah, hopefully, if you have some space in your, you some space in your luggage. Copy of the book. Um, and it is a uh, very, very inspiring to read. And uh, Rock, you even have a theory that um, there will be peace on earth when enough people read. The little no, sleepy star. We were translated to all six thousand languages. Ah, now we are only oh. ten. <laughs> <laughs> Big project. <laughs> I mean, it's. Um... Do you have a Russian edition already? Sorry. Do you have a Russian edition uh, already? Oh yeah. yeah. Also, we, we have. We have. <laughs> we have China edition. We have yeah. edition in Chinese, in Russian, in. Um, English also. But this was written, <laughs> uh, written as a radio play, as I mentioned <coughs> at the beginning, and as a puppet show, and was very successful. And the message is really so simple, beautiful. She's a young uh, star, only two million years old, and she <laughs> she liked to dream a lot. And then uh, she missed her job in the morning, and uh, then everything in the evening. In the evening. In the evening. In the evening. Yes. 
and then everything on earth goes wrong. Falls apart. Mm -hmm. uh, everything. Uh, the poet cannot write anymore, find the rhyme, uh, the sailors cannot find a way home, home and so on and so on. And then uh, she's punished uh, by guardian of the sky. She has to go on earth and to awake, uh, her mission is to awake a stone to a life again. To, how does it, how does it say? Yeah. So it's, um, but it's so touching, so it's simple message because in a way we are all sleepy star. We all have to learn how to awaken uh, um, the stone a life, life to, life. to uh, how to give a life to important things, in, uh, uh, precious things in our lives. I mean, so that's why it's not just a book. It's not just selling. It's promoting also a very ethical, very deep, uh, beautiful humanist message. values, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Slovenian's children favorite. Um, our bestseller also, and then we just, um, for um, out of love, basically, we, yeah. we translate it to, to other uh, uh, And it's languages probably also. the most popular Slovenian fairy tale. Everyone yeah. knows it. Oh, yeah. We just... And yes. for uh, generations. generations. I yeah. mean, it's not so our most popular, no, we are old, but it's also for mm -hmm. our children, grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Everyone is listening to this it's story like or reading yeah. it. Something that, that children would grow up with, basically. Mm -hmm. And then um, another um, uh, gem from uh, the field of uh, children's literature is uh, our project, uh, The Little Match Girl. I'm yes, sure yeah. I'm sure you um, know the, the classic fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. Um, but what we did, we adapted it for the 21st century audience. Um, through exquisite, very beautiful, very soulful illustrations, very modern ones also. Uh, we did this um, with Slovenian illustrator Polona Loshin. Um, and later on you can browse through it. I mean, they are so strong. Um, and I mean, this is, this is another sort of international I mean, the project for us that we would that that we have international aims with, with it, and then now we will move on to um, the last our one. to the last one then, to yes. Alamut, which is uh, this novel here, um, our um, bestseller. Rock, how many copies um, I think did over, Alamut uh, sold so, worldwide? Uh, it was published in 2002. Uh, was sold over 100,000 copies in Slovenia, what, 100? But, um, which is really, really a lot. This is probably one of the best, best selling books in Slovenia, which is very interesting that it was ri written in 1938. So it's over 70 years, 80, 90, uh, 80 years ago, in a very special way, because, you know, Slovenia, he was uh, from Trieste. He was, uh, the author of Vladimir which was subjected to Mussolini's fascism. Vladimir Bartol, he was uh, connected to Circles of Tiger, which, which was the first uh, anti-fascist armed, I mean, uh, opposition in Europe, one of the first in the world from 20s. He was connected with philosophers like Clement, Clement Jung, so on. It's very, and then he wrote this book, which is uh, dedicated to three to the dictators of his time, like uh, you know Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin, and um, and the story is based on truly historic facts from 11th century Iran and um, uh, um, yeah I, I would actually say it's philosophical uh, philosoph very philosophical novel as well still and which is very interesting about it that is probably one of the most translated and best-selling books in the world through decades you can find we found a lot of pirate translations in Arabic world just to in Indonesia, in Russia, in, in Farsi language. Uh, and you can, uh, we just signed a new contract with American publishers, which is also, and we got at least 15 offers for the making of movie, of um, Hollywood side and some other guys. But then it's always a, a problem because of artistic side, because we do not allow to abuse the work and the, 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 gen, the idea of the book, which is very important to our time. It's very interesting to mention also that this book, uh, the, the, one of the most successful video, video games, games of uh, last 10 years, uh, Assassin's Creed, was based on, inspired by Alamut, which was openly uh, admitted by, by the producers of Assassin's Creed, you know, Ubisoft, famous. Um, but still, uh, we don't have any translation in Germany yet, uh, press to mention. It was in the uh, 90s. 
Uh, it was published by Gustav Liebe Verlag, but it was. But this book is actually it's a classic, like you know the great works of I don't know from Tolstoy to to. Uh, no, I to, would uh, just maybe just to give you some like an idea, just very shortly of the um, what is what the book is about. Um, so, like Rok was saying, it is um, it is set in 11th century Iran, ancient Persia, um, and it tells the story of um, one uh, Hassan ibn Saba. Um, he's a self-proclaimed um, prophet, um, and he's uh, fighting against the Sultan army, uh, against the conquerors of of Iran in that era. Um, he's fighting holy war, you know, and he's a very controversial figure, very complex one. For some people, you can imagine he's a prophet and a liberator. For others, he's a tyrant, a terrorist. And what's very interesting, what's very interesting and very compelling about this novel is that it gained um, more imminent significance, significance um, after the events of um, uh, September 11th. You know, you can imagine. So it's really a story of the fir a world's first um, assassins, terrorists, and such a gripping story, really. It's also, um, as Rock was saying, um, there's a philosophical vein to it. It's based on um, Nietzsche's motto, uh, if nothing is true, then everything is permitted. And this motto echoes in the, the, the actions um, of, of the main protagonist, who is a tragical figure, in the end, um, I just, um, I would just say it, it is his desire to to play God um, that then fuels the the story, and many innocent lives are are drawn into this drama. It's really a story of epic dimensions, historic, um, philosophical novel. Absolutely, film material, which is why we are, um, yeah, like uh, we, we've been in negotiations with major film studios uh, about producing the, yeah, the film. It, it was the almost decided series. with Fatih Hakim, who was one of the best German uh, film directors. He he was chasing that for project for many years, but then I think he was afraid of, uh, of getting fatwa, uh, and also in your tour as a screenwriter. The scriptwriter also advised him better not to enter this project because we are dead. So it's just interesting to know. But I think we said it is enough. The, yeah. It is. <laughs> it is. It, it remains open for the for the future. But it's, it's been translated into world languages. So look, how many would, would you say? It, it's a great bestseller. It's a bestseller in France, in Turkey. Because there are some translations um, we don't know. We just know that the, which is really chattering for the author that he's widely read around the world, from all, all continents, even now. That's 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 very chattering for the author. And after so many years, and he was in a way prophetic because I remember he wrote in his diary when he finished his novel, I think it was mm -hmm. in June 38 or now I feel I am immortal, I am relaxed now, <laughs> they can kill me, I don't care. <clears throat> in this novel I am immortal and he wrote and I, but I feel that I, I write for the audience of the which will the understand that in audience. 50 years and it was yeah. almost up to date, 50 years later, 1988, uh, the book was published in in Paris with a great success, and it was really like selling 100,000 copies like this, and that was actually a start of international success of Alamut, which. Uh, but what is really just I will add one one yes. one made sentence about this. This book is uh, is so unordinary in a way, because when you when you fi it starts like innocent fairy tale, and then it's more and more dramatic, and more and more questions and issues arises. But then we finish the book; there is no answer. It's completely on the reader what to think about it, and this is something quite untypical and very brave from the author. He mm -hmm. he planned actually to to write trilogy, sequel, so, but then he never he lost his uh, inspiration after Second World War, after everything what happened. The mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, um, so um, let's, if you have any questions, uh, we, I think 
we wanted to tell a, a many, much more than this. <laughs> <laughs> there are, lot there are many, many we can, books uh, that you... just uh, mention Srijko um, Kusovil because you are going tomorrow to Karst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, introduce him with a small uh, poem translated in English. Uh, it's not very optimistic, but it's very... So, uh, uh, leave it for the end. Uh, j just a moment. I, I would for like the to end? say... Yeah, I, I, I would like <laughs> but to... But when, when we start talking... Okay, okay. okay. No, I, I just like to, to mention uh, uh, a very uh, book night project. I don't know if oh, I would yes. have it. Yes. 23rd of April is World's Book Day. And we started 10 years ago to promote the project Book Night on the very same day, which is now one of the most uh, popular reading projects in Slovenia. Uh, in over 160 villages and cities, because you don't have much cities in Slovenia, you have mostly villages, uh, is org uh, the org uh, organization of these projects on 23rd April take place. Uh, place. E events and take place. I, I know that Slovenians organize events in over uh, at least seven states around the world, and this will be 10 10 edition now this year, and this year we also invite uh, people to to write, uh, not just to organize events, but also to with writing and so on, and to with ideas. Uh, the main t uh, subject mm. here is peace. That's what I wanted to tell. And this this is something uh, else, Andrea. I, I mean the the book night. It it happens on the 23rd of of April um, on the International Book Day when we celebrate. Um, uh, yeah, we, we celebrate Cervantes and um, Cervantes Shakespeare, and Shakespeare. Um, birthday. Bir birthdays and also yeah. um, days of them passing. Um, and th this is just something we, we do to promote literacy, uh, books, um, reading, just nationwide. Um, and it's a really wonderful project, um, completely non-commercial for, for us. Um, but just something that we take great, great pride so in. Just for us, so. well, yeah, um, and so yeah. Now, now maybe it. I just wanted to add that with with Alamut, um, we would really maybe also like to appeal to you to um, represent. I, I uh, we we gave you the excerpts and so on of the um, of of the novel. Um, it's really sort of sad that it's not present in the German ma market being a book with such repercussion and such important themes so it would be this is this is one of our <coughs> aims for for um Frankfurt book fair also. Okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> so, now. <laughs> so and now and now the the time for poetry but, uh, <laughs> yeah. yes the international rights for Alamut then or yes yeah. Yeah, we yes. represent them. It's a long story. Actually, we have to, we were in a court in Paris to fight for rights because the publisher was really very responsible towards the, the, the estates, uh, the family of the writer. So it was a huge, ugly fight on a court in Paris, which took seven years, and then we got all rights back to Slovenia. But now, Okay, and now a poetry, but uh, be prepared. Kosovel was very young, but he wasn't naive, and he was a uh, he was very serious and very prophetic poet. Yeah, he was uh, very prophetic, and sometimes very sad. And uh, you wouldn't think that this poem uh, was written hundred years ago, because it's speaking about today. It's called Europe is Dying. The League of Nations and the pharmacy, each is a lie. Operations, revolutions. I'm standing on a gray road. Brown leaves are falling from the trees. There is only one thing I fear. That when these trees are black and bare, and the fields and small houses are grey, and I scream, everything, everything around will be silent. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, any questions? Well, uh, very simple question. Um, th thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, 
uh, very simple questions. Uh, are you selling books only in Ljubljana or you have d uh, different spots in the country? Uh, we have, this is our own bookstore, our shelter of our book, because today, you know, market conditions, they, you have to change books every two months. So this is our place, but we sell in all bookshops, in Berlinska Kniga, many spots, I think about 100 around, and then we also, we also sell international, because we publish some international titles, mostly English books, some German, like this one, and uh, I think we will, we'll, We'll develop this. We'll, we'll do a lot of international, much more internationally. Also, like e-books, you know, audio books, and so on. But we also sell books through our um, web uh, web store, web web bookstore, oh, online books. online bookstore. Yes. Um, so this is the uh, bookshop of the publishing house, and then um, your books are sold elsewhere as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And here we, we sell not just our books, but mm -hmm. like uh, the selection, best titles of uh, many publishers. Mm -hmm. So you can find them. But, I mean, it's not very commercial, but still we are so happy to have it. Yes, it's one of the last um, independent bookstores in, in Ljubljana, yeah, and yeah. Uh, just. Um, it, it it takes courage um, every year, you know, to mm. just to keep it to keep it going. But um, yeah, that's because uh, time, it's know. always a place of, of yeah. uh, meeting of, of meetings of um, beautiful liter literary events, um, and then of course the um, lovers of book book lovers come here and have a chance to browse through books. Um, it's always. Um, and and since it's, it has such a quite quite magical name, you know, it's always something uh, something I don't know unexpected or poetic happens here. It's it's worth keeping it. I'll, I'll mention for the end one yeah. thing. I don't know if you know author German author Mar Margrit Kennedy. She wrote a book. She was one of the best in the world for so-called co complementary currencies. Uh, a daughter. She was architect and daughter of a great banker, a German banker. But uh, she's international, she's deceased, I think, uh, seven, eight years ago. And we translated this book, it's called Occupy Mine. She wrote it after, you know, Occupy Movement in the US. This is so important book for us. She prefers everything what's going on today. Because we don't live in an honest monetary economic system. And, uh, and she warns about it, because it's mathematically impossible to go on. Also we, which do book books for example these market conditions are merciless for us i mean we should all gone i mean because it's no real you know what i mean um so democracy that doesn't controls the copyright of money it's not democracy who stole the copyright for the money i mean someone did uh, and that's not okay i mean we should mm -hmm. take over if we want really democracies in europe we should take over full control over copyright who, who can uh, duplicate money and why? I mean, mm. I'm not sure they have really good intentions <laughs> with... Uh, Look, there was a question <laughs> from uh, the audience. Uh, could you please say a few more words about the um, not so many independent publishing houses in Slovenia? Mm. Uh, what do you mean, not so many? Uh, yeah, the few. Uh, the, 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 there are only the few. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think in Slovenia you have uh, independent publishers, yeah. or you or you mean bookshops? Bookshops. You Publi mean publishers publishing, or all bookshops? Publishing houses. Yeah. Yes, yours. I think Slovenia, regarding all circumstances and the small economic power of the country, has a lot of variety of uh, very good publishers. So I'm pretty, even when I was a child. I was. I had the privilege to have some fantastic books, all translated, you know, because of those publishing houses. So, and it's still so today. So, regarding this, I only hope the economic system will be more, uh, more supportive for uh, creative um, working, uh, creative. How they say creative industries today, but I would say creativity I and mean, all kind of. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I answered your question. Mm -hmm. um, was what you had in mind um, 
the reason why they are less and less independent bookstores in Slovenia? Was that what you were... The question was about uh -huh. publishing. Publishing houses. houses. Ah, okay. I mean, in Slovenia, we have only one major publisher, really major. Yes. This is Medinska Knjiga. Yes. And this is, but this is a huge issue. I mean, uh, it was somehow allowed in back in 2004 that they they were, that they, they were allowed to overtake how they say overtake many independent houses like mm -hmm. Zankari was a loss, but like. <clears throat> um, Primorsky Tisk, Pomorsky Tisk, I don't know, and so on. <laughs> and so to create somehow a monopoly on the market. And they also were allowed to buy a chain of bookstores. And so that's a problem for our market. But on the other hand, it's a highway for Slovenian books. Without them, we could do anything. I don't know. It's, okay, it's important that they, that they exist. <coughs> you know. so, um, this, uh, just one very simple question that comes to my mind uh, spontaneously. Is there, are there fixed prices for books in Slovenia? Yeah, yeah but okay. six months after publishing, or, or after six months, uh, then it's again free market. Okay. Like, so this helps uh, to survive the bookshops. It's very mm -hmm. good. In France they have it, in Germany I think you have it. That's, uh, but that's not normal for some capitalistic country like US uh, or Britain, they lost so many independent bookshops mm. and so on. That's very sad. Mm. Also, perhaps w worth mentioning is that uh, Slovenia, but I'm sure you've already heard about it, um, has a really um, strong strong network I'm of, of uh, libraries, of public libraries. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, yeah. um, so we are also selling, you know, to to the libraries. They they are they are among buyers of of uh, our books. Yeah. So m many times when we when we produce um, hard hard copies, the, we we do this um, uh, thinking, you know, they will be for the the, the libraries will bought them out, will buy them out, you know. So um, and then. Sometimes brochures are for the for the market. I mean, this is it, it's not very it's not so simplistic, but um, there is this this dynamic also present. So, um, but I mean for for um, yeah for the for the reading culture um, to be to be present, basically, you know, they are, this is very important, this, this network of libraries. It's basically, I, I, for example, come from a very small village and there is a library, you know, so you would have it all covered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, can we ask you a question? How do you feel in Slovenia <laughs> after a couple of days? I mean, what are your impressions? <laughs> very tired. Yeah. So, uh, very tired. But, uh, really? It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful here. Yeah. But it's very compact with the uh, dates here and here and here. It's about so many impressions, and I think we need some time after yeah, our traveling yeah, um, yes. to look at um, behind it. Yes. And uh, yeah, but it's amazing. Absolutely yeah, over. Uh, yeah, you know, everything yeah. happens. So much. Uh, for a quite small country, you have an impressive uh, big range of different genres and authors. Uh, and that is really impressing. I mean, uh, yeah, that's but that's uh, you know, Slovenia just on a crossroad of you know, yeah, so yeah, many no, cultures. No, no. It's yeah. Roman yeah. culture, it's Italian, yeah. it's a German, yeah. it's a uh, uh -huh. it's Slavic world, and it's an uh, Hungarian world. Yeah. So, and in order to survive, you have in a way to understand all those cultures yeah. and to combine them. So, it's Slovenia interesting to experience to live in Slovenia. I mean, mm -hmm. you also it's a variety in a country. If you go just 50 kilometers on east or on north, or you go to Alps, you, you are in the trickler. It's you have a Mediterranean, as you will see tomorrow, which is beautiful, one of the dearest my my heart. You have Alps. You have uh, you know completely flat uh, country. You have Dolenska with small hills, very... So it's really variety. So it's it's good place to live but here. Tomorrow, but now when you... We were, because you were saying you were so full of, of impressions, uh, but tomorrow hopefully you have a more relaxing day in the Karst region. And if... Um, 
And if you like it, um, that, and, and if you decide to come back, just to let you know, we are organizing a poetry festival, poetry and wine oh, festival, nice. um, during the last day of uh, June. So you are well, oh. last weekend of June. So you are absolutely welcome to come. I mean, you will, yeah, you will, um, you will go to Scotland. Music. Yeah. Fire place. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, no, fire, yeah. fire work, yeah. Um, but you, and you will see uh, Schottian cave, uh, caves tomorrow. And we also do uh, oh, you performances. Will go to Yes, they... oh, that's great. That's, you know, this was <laughs> a, a great. sacred really, place. Yeah. In, in yes, it's yeah. amazing. It's the underworld. How se reče romarski cilj v the for the um, pilgrimage. Thank, yeah, thank the pilgrimage. you very much. In ancient Mediterranean world, uh, all all people from Egypt to go there because it's incredible. And the inspiration, incredible. the inspiration for which literary work, uh, rock for uh, say oh, for Dante's 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 Inferno. Uh, Dante Dante Alighieri. Yes. Ah. Um, Dante Alighieri's uh, Inferno, and um, I was just going to say that um, we also um, organize uh, poetry or dance performances in one of those caves because uh, um, Karst is really full of them. It's the you have. To we have our own cave. Our own cave. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's world record in, in caves, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, don't forget any books. If you have interest, you can ask oh, also yeah. me. That's very nice. Uh, and uh, please do let us know if at any point uh, Walter Moore's um, uh, reveals right. his, his identity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am very oh. curious. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to have an interview with yeah. him. But, uh, he knows it, that he's uh, inspired to you for this. Yeah, he knows. He knows. I know. Yeah. yeah. Through, through the publish, okay. through the editor, right? Yeah, through the editor. Through the editor. Was okay. Wolfgang Ferrer. He's yeah. now uh, he's now retired, but he was with Knauss for luck. Yeah. He was our guest here. Oh, yeah. oh, many famous people sat here, even yeah. Slavoj Žižek, Birgitta Jorgo, yeah. through many authors. Uh -huh. You can see Wolfgang, on... Wolfgang is as book crazy as you are. Sorry? <laughs> Wolfgang is as book crazy as you are. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you so much for your attention and have a lovely thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Perfect. <laughs>